press your heads collectively up against my bosom because mama is here. And if you're hungry at all, just, you know, open your mouth and give me a little wink and I'll squeeze some sustenance into your mouth because these titties are functional. Useless bags of flesh before and now they have a use of purpose, meaning I am going to feed the world. Oh, how you feeling? because everybody's going to get pregnant tonight. <laughs> Especially you, Sarah, in the button-up shirt and tie. You're going to look like the speckled, like, Wall Street banker baby. <laughs> I am feckened. That is not swearing with an Irish brogue. I'm feckened, but I am a fertile goddess for your wants and needs. You know, it's a great time to be alive. I love, you know, in the information age, but you know, it's a little bit of a busy time. It's a little loud, it's a little hectic, it's a little violent. So I want to do a, a quick little cleanse of the space just to clear the hashtags out of your head. <laughs> so what I want you to do is I want you to, to breathe in through your nose all the, uh, the hashtags bubbling around whatever, dem you know, democratic, you know, convention, Republican convention. <laughs> I want you to breathe it in and then I want you to blow it out um, against my body because it's a really expensive <laughs> filtration system. This is 30, 38, 29, 42. <laughs> so it's 68 tonight with this bustle. Baby, bustle, 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 twerk that bustle, twerk it. Um, um, okay, so ready, everybody? Breathe in the hashtags. All your feed, all those people yelling at you from every side. And oh, my body, I want to feel the wind, I want to feel the wind. Yes. It feels good in here now. I've had a very big year. I got knocked up. <laughs> and I had a human baby. A human baby, the way that you applaud, sir. It's like you were there at the conception. <laughs> It was an immaculate conception. And by that I mean it was a very clean hotel room. <laughs> High thread count Egyptian cotton sheets. Oh my goodness. I am I'm you know, I'm I'm experiencing a I'm working a really a, a really smoky, sleepy, sleepy eye. A sleepy eye. And I'm giving you an, like an open eye nap right now. I can't even tell. I look so animatronic, right? I look so animated. But I, I, I'm finding that sleep deprivation is, um, is like the new LSD, so <laughs> what, I, what I'm hoping to do, I, I, I'm, I'm giving everybody bedroom eye because I'm just scanning for the nearest bedroom <laughs> so I can take a nap. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm hoping we all can kind of dive into the dreamscape together because, you know, it's like waking, sleeping, you know, let's just, let's just be there together, like, just slowly swaying with each other and we don't know if we're awake or asleep. And it's gonna be good. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like stripes. I like that. This is Yair Evni. <laughs> Beautifully accompanying me tonight on a myriad of instruments and and also programmed electronic devices. Oh! 
That's a John Lennon song, uh, written after a particularly intense form of gestalt therapy. Um, it's, a, it's a great reminder for me how angry your children can be at you. <laughs> I, um, I, uh, you know in the, the cliche that, that a woman in labor, she's screaming at the man who impregnated her, you know, she's like, you did this to me! I didn't feel any of that anger towards um, that man, but I felt all of it funneled towards my mother. Um, I, I was like, you really did this to me because you put me here and now I'm in this pain. It was very existential, the snake eating its own tail. And it was awkward because she was in the room with me. But we're speaking again. And, um, my sweet, 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 beautiful Jewish mother, who as soon as I was born, was like, and when are you going to have a baby? <laughs> she was like an actor that wanted to be a director. She's like, what I really want to do is grandmother. <laughs> um, um, she's a beautiful, very generous person who, she came, she, she came uh, across on the hippie train from New York to San Francisco and, you know, and lived in Hayden in Ashbury, right in the center of it all, 69, and, and was there in the scene and living it up, and then she decided to go north when the drugs turned intravenous. <laughs> she met my father on a commune outside of Eugene, Oregon, and um, they had that special twinkle in, in their eyes that meant they would be a good genetic pairing. And so, um, <clears throat> I'm sure you guessed this already, but I was astrologically planned. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're like, we did, we did. Um, my parents seriously went to ovulation journals in hand to a woman. Um, I'm sure she was wearing purple velvet. Um, and they asked for the specific day to conceive a girl who was an artist. And she, you know, went through her books and charts and circles and squares and made a lot of gestures up to her up and down and then gave them the day and then I was and they abstained before and after and I was conceived on that day. So the stars were aligned for us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The stars were aligned. Um, I, um, uh, the, the commune fell apart because they always do. Because <laughs> everybody thought someone else was paying the rent. They were like, you were doing it, Bernie. And I you know, was like, yes, that was Bernie. So they, they went to the coast of Oregon, which they, they started an intentional artist community based around theater. And so you, uh, it was basically, you know, they just threw a bunch, all their kids in the center of a circle and then just did trust falls around them, you know. And they did incredible things. They did, you know, I remember very specifically my father painting tomato tomato cans to make stage lights in a barn because they were doing Shakespeare and Brecht and barns and basements and they did a very special production, a children's version of The Elephant Man uh, with life-size puppets that still make occasional appearances in my nightmares. Um, I, they did a couple of um, musicals a year if they were politically charged, like Hair or Sound of Music. <laughs> I, I played, um, that, my first role was, uh, my first singing role was when I was four years old in The Sound of Music, I played Gretel. And uh, apparently on my exit, I, um, when I'm supposed to be asleep, I like winked at the audience and then I picked my nose. So I, <laughs> I understood rebellion and breaking the fourth wall quite early. I'm interested in conventions. Um, I um, it was a fantastic way to be raised because I had all these adults invested in my future and invested in my raisings. You know, every everybody breastfed me, even the men. You know, equal opportunity. And um, it, was, it was just an incredible, incredible upbringing. And so this is basically what happens when you tell a child they can be anything they want to be. <laughs> sweet, sweet delusion, ladies and gentlemen. That's what happens, and I'm glad that you've bought into the delusion today. Thank you for coming to this delusion. We'll all be in the dreamscape together tonight. Um, do, you, do you like this ensemble? Yeah. Uh, separates. I'm 
branching out, you know, I'm getting wild. Um, it's, um, but you know what's great about this outfit is that it has pockets, ladies, ladies. Feminism. We've been waiting like 1,200 years for pockets. <laughs> Maybe this year we'll get them. Um, but these pockets, these pockets are, are very, you can really only, you can only fit regrets in here. <laughs> Or, or like, or a tic tac for dinner. Um, oh my, you're so beautiful. Um, oh god, everybody looks so good. What I love about this this pocket is that you can actually, um, here, honey, put your hand in in one side, and then yeah, yeah, because and I'll meet you. Hey, there you go. Hey, there you go. Because you know what else you can fit in here? Self pleasure. <laughs> Secret self pleasure. Would you help me on stage, please? Give him a round of applause. Okay, okay. Come, come to me, come to me. We're gonna step underneath this little jellyfish dome. You're gonna get, it's, I'm traveling along the road, so you gotta get inside here and stand actually inside this trunk, if you can do that. Can you stand in there? Here, yeah, yeah, I'm helping you, I'm helping you. Get your big, your beautiful big feet in there, yeah. I love that you're wearing, you know, totally functional shoes. Ready for a trail hike later. Okay, so you're gonna hold this. Yeah, and this is perfect. I'm gonna ask you to do so many things right now. Um, don't look. I know, no, no, no. Are you stoned? Are you okay? Okay. Oh, okay. This now, this is how I am. Oh, good. Well, this is good. Okay. All right. This is as good as it gets. Concert, like you know, like an amusing little. Oh, can you tell me? Nothing. 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 Like this. Nothing at all. Well, here's my naked body. So here's this concert for you. Um, would you also hold this microphone for me? So you're gonna hold. Yes. Oh, good. Because you look wrong. What? What's your name, man? Paul. Paul. Are you Jewish? No. Oh, okay. So yes. Oh, oh, you're lying. Okay, okay. I knew. I could smell it too. So, Paul, where were you born? Uh, it, uh, at Long Island Jewish Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get in there with you. Um, so, tell me, tell me, um, do you know how you were conceived? It wasn't one of those like test tube things. Oh yeah. So your parents were married. Were you the first? And only. Oh, first and only child. That explains so much already. <laughs> Oh, that's such a good lie. Um, so, Paul, you're doing perfect. Um, I'd like for you to... Can you describe your mother in three words for me? One being constructive criticism. Huge. Ashtray. Whoa, that was... Are you sure you're not stoned? No, I'm not Lifetime smoker? Oh, that's just, yeah, okay. personality. Oh! <laughs> Ashtray mother. Oh, that is so good. It feels like a John Waters film. Um, um, so, I don't know if you got this, Paul, but I'm a new mother. Did you get that? I just had yes, it was wonderful. Okay, and um, so I'm just trying to pick up parenting techniques. So is there anything that your mother or your parents did that you think was like amazing and beautiful? Self-hate kind of thing uh, like? No, I actually want like, do you oh, have no, memory? Like, like, yes, you like, yes. yes. I remember liking like, uh, I don't know, building models and stuff. Oh, no. And whatever I wanted to do, they gave me that opportunity. So they got the, the tools and the glue. As long as I was a woman. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And did they stay married through your whole childhood? Yes. They did. Are they still married now? No, my well, no. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah. passed away. Yeah, but um, but it was yeah, it was you no, got to model. No, 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 not, not even a little bit. You oh. really wanted to do yeah. well with each other. 
well, yeah, I want to do well with my child. But there's got to be some, yeah, the, the model home, that was good. Is there anything? They let me do anything. They really encouraged me to have fun. But, I couldn't participate. But, like, what about, like, giving too much free reign? There, there was it was a different, like, I was talking to my friends, you disappear for 12 hours. <laughs> and just, like, run around Long Island. In, into the city. Oh, I love that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> oh, but it's well, no, it, it'll be you know you just you know, all set. We'll talk about this. Okay. <laughs> did you know you have a drink for all pregnancies? Yes, I did have a drink for all. No, of course I had wine. Okay, you can even I had wine and sushi. <laughs> One, so I'm both inside myself. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they, and they're all okay. Oh, you're so beautiful. You can step out of my trunk now. Woo! Uh, <laughs> I have a little present for you. Cindy's going to step out and give you this. Cindy, you No, don't, don't show, show it off. This isn't my merch. It's um, it's got, it's my new, I got new t-shirts, ladies and gentlemen. And they got my eyes on you. Got a nice Watch your step. Watch your step.
the first happy love song I've ever written. Um, which is not to say I haven't been happy or in love before, I just never thought it was artistically valid. I found out that I was pregnant just as I had started a four-month run of a show in which I appeared heavily corseted, and I made an appearance my, my entrance in a giant clamshell and my exit in a, in a golden moon spitting above the audience's head. I had to place glamorous secret vomit buckets in the wings. And sometimes I would use them and I'd make an entrance and I'd use them on my exit as well. I was always afraid of a very special confetti coming down from that ceiling moon. But luckily that never happened. Um, I, I, the show finished as soon as my course had popped and then, and then I started a proper tour and I flew 17 times with that baby inside of me, which um, is, 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 is fine. There's no medical reason you shouldn't. Um, the, the only reason that the airlines have any guideline, guidelines against it is that they want to protect their upholstery. Um, <laughs> mostly, people were kind about it, but there was this woman who, um, a check-in woman, when I was flying to New Zealand, who, um, you, need, you need a special note that says, like, you're uncomplicated, which I've never been. <laughs> So, uh, she was like, um, she, she had the kind of, she had that uh, active bitch face, and um, she was like, I really need to say you night, and she like points aggressively at my belly, and I was like, that just, it felt a little rapey the way she pointed, and so, I was like, oh, I just wanted to play with her, I said, my note, my note for what? She was like, more aggressively points at my belly, you know, because I was like six and a half months pregnant. I was like, oh, this, this is glandular. <laughs> Upgrade! <laughs> such thing as too pregnant to fly. Too pregnant to fly. No, too pregnant to fly, I think, was an R. Kelly song at some point, probably. <laughs> too pregnant, girl, you're too pregnant to fly. <laughs> pregnant was uh, was when I was eight months pregnant. I wanted to do it up until the end because I thought it would just be an incredible experience to give birth on stage. I just, I just thought that, that that shows you what kind of demented show pony I am. I was just really excited because I thought that would be just the best show behind only dying on stage. Got really not happen. Maybe cap it at eight months, but my final um, my final performance was actually on this beautiful postage Woo! stage yeah. here at Joe's Park. For any of you who got that performance, a big old bump, big old bump, and um, and I just you know I thought it would be a great place to give birth on stage too because Joe's Pub is so incredible and the staff is amazing. Yeah. I, mean, I, just, I knew I knew that one of these waitresses or the bartender would just run down with a wine key and cut that into a fill the cord and, and then I would have like special like garbage bags to, pr to protect the front row, like a splash guard, kind of Gallagher, Gallagher concert kind of thing. What's up? I got it. <laughs> um, I, um, we didn't find out the gender of our uh, baby before we gave birth because I figure these days, you don't really know the gender of your child until they tell you, and they could be 60 something years old. So. I, for all of time, it's been that way, but uh, finally we're getting to, to understand it, you know. Um, so, but it does turn out I did have a penis inside me for nine months. I don't know I've had one inside me before. It's never that tiny. Um, Actually, my, my, one of my midwives is in the audience tonight, so please give her a round of applause. Yes, it's a great 
I just really, I, we had a, a home birth in a Chelsea apartment. There, I'm sure there will be tours there someday soon. Um, and we got the inflatable, you know, blow up tub, you know, which we found out isn't to be used for recreation afterwards. Um, but I'm really enjoying watching the kids on 21st Street just play in that. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, I um, I didn't have a hospital birth because I don't really love hospitals, and something happened to birth where it got hijacked a little bit. Some uh, obstetricians, um, uh, which you know, they, there's beautiful obstetricians out there too, but they kind of medicalized birth and and um, and made it something to be treated and drugged. And and it, I have done so much. So many drugs in my life, and it's strange that I decided that that was the day I would stop doing drugs. Um, but, but that, that was the that was the deal. And I, I was I just really the obstetricians they just get really they get really antsy if it seems like your birth is impending on the start of their golf game, and uh, and then they just want to zorro that baby right out of you. You know, and I just didn't want to have a cosmic birth where I didn't remember what happened. Um, <laughs> Too soon, ladies and gentlemen. Too late. That was 40 fucking years. All right. <laughs> Cosby. Um, so um, I, um, I, I, birth is is such a beautiful, mysterious, wonderful, sacred experience slash an alien horror film. <laughs> and pregnancy itself, I mean, it's so strange, you forget that you have a living being inside you, and when I was touring on getting along with my business, like, all of a sudden, this I'd see this hand kind of, you know, press out of my belly, and like a gang sign flash. You know? <laughs> and I'd have to accept that, like, there was a living being inside a being that was going to pass through my regime. <laughs> Breastfeeding is best, but it's not always easy. And you have to learn. There's a learning curve, and how are you going to latch or mount, or are you going to pile drive, or you going to run and, and do a five point latch in the mouth, and how are you going to angle it, and how is it going to stick on, or are you going to turn it around? I do it. Um, I um, and you know Tennyson, which is the name of my son, Tennyson, Lord Tennyson, Lady Rizzo, um, and. Um, Tennyson, you know, is a very good eater. Um, that's why I've lost a little weight. She's sucking it out, sucking it left and right. Um, and um, I, uh, you know, you don't know where you're going to need to feed, you know. And in the beginning, that's the the source of, of sustenance. And so, and I wasn't like always in a situation where I was like in a wafty robe that could open and, and I could float up to it, you know. And sometimes I was like, unfortunately at IKEA, you know. We find ourselves at IKEA, unfortunately, sometimes because we need cheap furniture. And um, so, so I, um, I was at IKEA and I needed to, I needed to feed Tennyson and and um, and uh, I didn't know where to do it and I couldn't find a lactation room because there was none. And uh, I uh, so I. 
I, I fe realized I was on that floor that has all the presentational model rooms. <laughs> uh, and I found the nursery room. Uh, and so I, I, went, I went and I sat and I sat in the, one of those beautiful gliding, you know, ottomans and I just became part of the installation. <laughs> My choice of pop art and you know test tasteful rugs and and this woman from across the floor kind of she spied me and she got a little conservative spasm on her face. <laughs> reaction was, um, get out of my house. <laughs> Swedish meatballs in her mouth. I grabbed this baby blanket, I threw it over her head, and I said, I would prefer it if you ate covered up. <laughs> because that is disgusting. That, and then I ran. And then I ran. Because I had left Tennyson in the baby bassinet for the her home. So the moral of this story is revenge doesn't always make the best pet. To me. I'd like to invite you guys to, uh, I'd like to invite you to do a little fun substitution for this next song. Um, if you would, um, if you would, if you wouldn't mind, when you feel like, if you feel like hooping and hollering, I want you to instead go, shh, like a, like a, 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 a shush sound. And if, if you, um, if you would like to applaud, I'd like for you, do you want to practice that? Just make the shush. Yeah. Shh. Yeah, I like the Russian water. Don't be misappropriated. And um, now you all do, because you all felt about it. Um, and then, if you'd like to applaud, I would like for you to be like a beat making snack. I'm on tour, so I. Oh, 
Thomas, actually. That's a Dylan Thomas um, poem. And it, the IER is an incredible we wrote that with the... Uh, um, yeah, it's, it's on the album, which is coming out soon, someday, I promise. I had another production I had to release. Uh, I spent the last three years on tour, which, that's a, it's a fantastic, you know, gypsy life, you know, friends in every port, but, um, I, you know, when there's a, a baby inside you, there's an innate need to nest, and, and so I, 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 ran, I ran back uh, to New York, and got an apartment just in time, and, 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 and the birth was, was incredible. And what I didn't expect was, um, was is that you need time to heal afterwards, like time where you actually shouldn't really do anything. And um, that's really hard to do when you've been going from 60 to zero and moving every two weeks, and all of a sudden you're just in an apartment alone and, and completely your life's changed. And also, there is a windfall of hormonal shifts because you've built up a bunch of estrogen science, well, science time, guys, um, estrogen and progesterone in your body, and, and then that rapidly depletes, and then you have testosterone move in, which testosterone makes you feel crazy, am I right, my brothers? <laughs> it just makes you feel like ragey, dead inside, and then horny. Rage, dead, horny. Rage, dead, horny. Rage, dead, horny. Rage, dead. Single tear. Rage, dead, horny. Um, and, um, and so I felt a little crazy, which is natural, you know, and I was used to, you know, I would love to go out on a, on a, I like the nightlife, I got to boogie on the disco, ah! And uh, so I was like, viciously Googling if I could bring a newborn baby to a bar, and is it that rude or not? Because I really wanted to go to this party, this dance party, and, and, and then my beautiful partner, who's incredible and, and very supportive and very, firmly kind, was like locking the doors and the windows. <laughs> was like, you're not gonna go dancing, you're bleeding. You're leaving a snail trail of blood. <laughs> and I was like, I just wanna leave up like Rapunzel, I wanna put my hair out this window when the hair's too short. <laughs> and, um, and, and yes, you just feel sleepy and weepy and it's it's all natural, but it's, it's hard hard to deal with. And, and uh, I'm just beginning to feel and sleep de deprivation is a real thing, you know. And but I'm just starting to, to come back into to reality now. And um, and I um, I always wanted to have a baby when um, I had some sort of facsimile of the life that I was raised in. And whether that's you know a big brownstone where I get a bunch of families that I like and we all just put our kids in the in the hallway and we do our raves and salons around them. <laughs> You know, but I can't afford a brownstone, even in bed or Harlem, or West Harlem, or East Harlem, or the Bronx. I, even if I pool my money, I can. And, and, um, and, and then also, I, um, you know, there's this detail of like, not very many of my friends are having babies, because I have a lot of queer friends and showbiz gypsies, you know, and, and so I, I find myself in this strange place where all of a sudden I, I, I'm there, I, I feel pressure to all of a sudden shift my entire social circle towards these women in very comfortable shoes and, and versatile <laughs> strollers. And um, I don't want to do that. And uh, I was like, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they're fine. I just don't want to talk about the newest, you know, baby bouncer. And um, because I got it right here. Here's my baby bouncer. And, um, and so I, you know, I, and then I also, you know, I honestly still have, um, qualms about about bringing a, a, a baby into this world. I mean, if, if Trump's ginger whinging and Kim Kardashian's book of selfies are the horsemen for the apocalypse, I don't know what is. And, and so, and so I find, you know, and right now our life is very violent, it's very loud, it is a lot of comes, there's a lot of confusion, and there's a lot of people talking about it in your face and in your ears and on your screen. And, um, and so I just want to be honest with you that even though I'm super happy to have gone through it, I still have a little bit of breeder shame. I, I just wish it wasn't, I wasn't so demonstratively heterosexual, you know, it's just so obvious. I could just do it in a corner, you know, it would just be less obvious, but when I got it strapped to me, it's so obvious, you know. And, but I'm doing a new thing with shame. I'm presenting it to audiences and it becomes art. It's, um, I, like, I, I like to call it chart, 
But, um, it's, it's sweeping the nation, and it's on top of you right now. Um, and, um, and, and so, um, I have all these fears, and I'm sure they've been around for, you know, eons. Um, and then I wake up in the morning, and I see that beautiful, beautiful child, and he smiles at me. He's happy in the morning. I mean, he gives me baby giggles, and I swear, baby giggles are like better than any drug I've ever done. I just want to chop them up and do a big fat line of baby giggles. Just like, I'm going to mainline those giggles till I pass out. And, um, and so I see this beauty and hope in his face, and I, and I look at him and I think, you know, maybe this life having this strange cabaret high priestess mother that, that travels around the world and has all these incredible artist friends and you know a drag queen will paint his face and you know a dyke will take him on a march and you know and and you know he'll be exposed to so many artists in so many countries and and maybe just maybe this child will help the world <laughs> Or the, he could be the next dictator. We don't, he could rebel, you know, we don't really know. We don't really know. So, so you know, um, so th I have three million, we're dead. I'm sorry, this is too soon, too, really too late. Because um, the next one is upon us. Um, um, and so, all this is coming to this. I stand as humbly before you, as humbly as I can in a gown made of metal sequins. <laughs> and heavily lit by a roving spotlight. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. I stand humbly in, for, in front of you because I think that 90% of human history was spent in nomadic tribes and I've got the nomadic part down. But the only way that I can have my roving tribe is if in the hour and a half that's afforded me in front of audiences all over the world, that I create my community. And so I stand in front of you with heels and with a microphone and my lashes. And I ask you, will you be my tribe? Yes, yes. You need a little bit of infant eyes. You need a little, you need to look through the eyes of an infant. It's the only way to battle sarcasm. <sighs> I'm gonna take a hit off of you, Paul. <laughs> because you are part of my tribe, and this is almost better than baby giggles, but not quite. <laughs>
shush to a baby is not the beginning of shut up. It's because it's the first sound we ever heard. It's the whirring of the blood from your mother around your ears. So that's why this is such a comforting sound. I've invited you here so you could have a view of the beginning, of your beginning. So you could be born again, and I don't mean that in a creepy Christian way. <laughs> fundamentalist way. If you're a fundamentalist Christian, why are you here? <laughs> I'm sure you've been offended enough to leave. I, I've invited you here so, so that you can really truly relax your thumbs, like pre-iPhone relaxation. Relax, relax the back of your skull. Let it rest. Because you are fed and you are housed and you are carried by me. This is like IVF gone very wrong. <laughs> Again, the whooshing sound. Rest, and perhaps remember. Remember the very first breath or the very first heartbeat, because this is the true fabric of who you are. All the other stuff is noise, all the things we've decided about ourselves. And this is the beat that you will die with. It's the same heartbeat, it's the same rhythm that you were born with. <sighs> oh, yes. You don't need a higher tax bracket or a larger apartment because you've got this womb. Again, the rushing sound. When I start singing, if you could help let the womb walls fall. The 
um, thank you for coming here last night of, um, of Multiplied. I really appreciate it. You're the last people in the United States to see it, so um, I'm really happy you're here. Be my trans doula! <laughs> That's my trans doula. Um, got the right there. Um, <laughs> so, um, I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> Um, so I, I would like to just do a quick shout out to um, to Bruce um, who did my makeup and hair. Thank you, Bruce. He's come every night and this is drag tested, bitch approved. So that's his tagline, not mine. Um, so um, Bruce is from. Um, so um, yeah, please tell your your friends in in. in London or Edinburgh, come see me there. I have two weeks there. And thank you so much. I'll be signing some albums and merch. And um, and yeah, I'm really glad. I'll call you all about babysitting. Um, um, the, let's, uh, let's do the um, yeah. Let's do the thing with the party. Yeah. Oh, you want to come out? What do you want to do? You you want, okay? Yeah, you're just calling the encore. Because <laughs> because it is. It's, it's, it does kind of feel like a mellow, it's like a mellow, it's a mellow Tuesday. We're gonna finish, I guess, with the, um, okay, with the first song that we, that Yair and I, I ever wrote together. Um, and uh, it's so hard to find a, a songwriting collaborator because it's like harder than a boyfriend. Um, and uh, I'm so glad to have found Yair. Uh, and, uh, and he looks real, really cute. Straddling a cello, so I don't know why I feel like perching. How you guys doing up there? How you doing? Yeah. 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 I make sure the, the Tetons are in. The, this is like my workout regimen is just wearing this gown, suckling and squatting, suckling and squatting. This is like my Knights of the Round Table kind of armor. This is a lullaby for adults because, um, and I just, while he's setting up, I want to say one other thing. I, I don't think that my life would be unvalid or unpurposeful if I didn't have a child. I think I would look back and still think it was rich with experience. And I think that, that it's just different experience with a child. And, and I just want to, I just want to express that, 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 um, that, that there's, there's no shame in not having a baby and there's no shame in having a baby. It's just lean in and be, take care of each other. Babies that are, are made by artists. And like, we need babies that are made because, like, because conservative people are breeding like crazy. So, so we need, smart people need to still have babies. Okay? I'm not feeling like I'm not. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> and, um, and let's not have. Um, I just don't want to have another, I don't want to have a ty tyrannical dictatorship next, so do whatever you can to prevent that. Because <laughs> <laughs> Canada officially said that we can't move there. <laughs> this is a lullaby for adults because we all need to be felt like we're being held and and rocked by something bigger than us. And so this is a, a lullaby from a saint's point of view. When the stars peak and the winds rise, I will come. I will come for you. With your face
I'll carry you. 